Isn't this a pretty dope uh, SpongeBob light? Well, today's video is not about that. It's about this computer, HP desktop over here, that uh, has problems booting into the operating system. So let's try to fix it. So uh, here is like basically a tutorial on what happens if your computer um, turns off right as soon as it starts loading the operating system. Uh, the first thing I did with this computer whenever I noticed this, I was like, well, it's probably a broken hard drive. So here's the hard drive, uh, the one that came on the computer with uh, Windows Vista, I believe. And uh, of course, whenever you turn this on, it runs fine and then it runs the operating system and the computer shuts off altogether. Uh, totally shuts off. So the hard drive turned out it actually was bad. It actually was really, really bad and I can't even get the data off of it. So that was terrible, but surprise, surprise, uh, I have uh, a, hard, a new hard drive in here and a flash drive with Windows 10 on it. We'll try to boot up uh, into Windows 10 installation and see what happens. Now, as you guys can see, I'll take off the side panel. And as you can see, I got a Seagate solid state hybrid drive in there. I figured I'd speed up the computer a little bit. The computer just shut off, so as it was trying to boot into Windows 10 installation. So here we are in the boot menu, the Kingston Data Traveler, whatever. That is my Windows 10 installation. And we'll see what happens. All right. It didn't even show the Windows screen this time. Usually it'll show your Windows, uh, the Windows installation screen. So that's the issue. Um, we've already rolled out the hard drive is not the issue, which means it has to be something hardware based within the computer. So let's start piecing out the components, I guess. So basically you have to piece out the components at this point. And one of the first things I did uh, was personally, I mean, like check the connections and the power supply. So here's the uh, 24 pin, which is the large connector on the motherboard. And also the, uh, the four or eight pin, which is pretty close to the CPU right there. Uh, so check those connections. Those are vital to the computer working properly. <laughs> um, you can also check the connection uh, that connection that's on the right there is the SATA uh, power cable for the hard drive and I guess the DVD drive, but that's very useless really. Uh, and maybe like if you have like a graphics card, there might be power plugged into that as well. Uh, on this HP computer, it would be here where the expansion slots are. So you can check all your connections, basically take your connections off, put them back on and see if that helps. Um, you can literally take off all the connections on the motherboard and then turn on the computer and see if that helps. Like it can, t you can remove like the front uh, USB ports, which are like these uh, like tan cables. You can remove those to see if those are maybe causing an issue. Uh, basically remove everything you can from the computer uh, to sort out a problem, you know? And if you want, you can piece this out one by one to make sure you know exactly which problem it is. But uh, basically moral of the story is the, the, the fewer things on the computer are the fewer things uh, that can screw up the computer. An easy next thing you can do is to uh, remove uh, the RAM sticks. And if you're touching in anything on the inside of the computer, those connections, uh, RAM, you really, if you're touching the computer at all, first what you need to do, pull out the power cord and hold down the power button for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. And that drains all the power out of the computer so you're not gonna kill yourself or the computer. So like you can take out your RAM sticks. As you see here, I have four. Um, you can just do these little doohickeys and cool, it didn't fall out. So you can like take out the RAM sticks and um, you know, you like an idea is you can like just switch out the configuration. You can move like the RAM stick that's over here or there. Um, you can try just like one RAM stick and see what happens. Uh, you can try to remove all the RAM and see what happens, although the computer's not really going to boot properly because there is no RAM. But basically, you know, you can just swap out the RAM sticks because RAM sticks can cause really um, weird issues kind of like this. So that's a possibility. As you might be able to tell, uh, the RAM wasn't the issue on my computer. Uh, I actually bought new RAM because I was going to upgrade it as well. And I tried the new RAM. Uh, worked just fine. Well, it didn't work fine. The computer still shut off. And uh, with the old RAM, it did that as well, regardless of configuration of where the RAM was and everything. So that uh, didn't fix the issue. 
So at that point, it's time to move on to other uh, ideas of what could be causing the issue. Personally, I was kind of thinking the power supply, just because the computer is totally shutting off, maybe something related to the power supply is causing issues. Um, you can test that in a couple different ways. Here's a power supply tester from Thermaltake. Uh, basically, there's where the 24 pin plugs into. That really long connector right there plugs into down here. And then you can plug in like the CPU and any other power connectors into this thing and uh, click the power button right there. And uh, it'll show you like voltage readouts and everything. And it'll tell you if the power supply is going bad or if it's totally fine. In this case, it was totally fine. I still went ahead and put a new power supply in there. That's the second way you can test it is literally just go buy another power supply and you know maybe a cheap one just to at least test it out. Uh, and you can plug everything in and see if it uh, has the same issue then. If it still has the same issue with a different power supply, then you know for sure that uh, it's not the power supply's issue. And in this case, it wasn't the power supply's issue, so we have to move on to uh, the next step. One next step I took is my customer here has like, I think it's just like literally like a phone jack adapter um, for some reason. <laughs> Did he still have dial up at some point? I don't know. But um, anyways, all like the expansion cards, take those out and uh, try to boot the computer, see if it still has the same issue. In this case, it did, so that uh, phone connector is not the issue. And uh, at that point, you know, you're kind of getting limited on what you can do here. Uh, one thing I kind of thought about doing was I went ahead and turned on the computer, and then I unplugged the power, uh, the power button connector, which is a little hard to see, but it's there on the corner. Um, it's the one that's the the black, red, blue, and yellow cable. Um, that plugs into the motherboard. You kind of just have to source where it's coming from. You know, the power supply is up, or the power button is up here, so you kind of have to look up here and see, well, what connectors are coming up here? And as you can see, the connector is right there in the back, which is not being focused upon camera. There it is. <laughs> so, what I did was I turned on the computer, so the power button was actually working, and then I unplugged the power button to see if the power button was shutting off the computer. It was not, so it's not the power button uh, causing the issue. So it's time to move on to the next thing once again. I guess you can try removing the hard drive, but in my case, we need a hard drive to load Windows onto. <laughs> so um, probably not the issue there. Uh, you can also uh, try to remove the disk drive and also the connections on the motherboard, which are, in this case, those like little pink flat cables. Uh, that's the SATA data cables. So you can try removing as much wood as connected to the computer as possible uh, and see if it works. Don't disconnect the power or the CPU fan unless you want to also buy a brand new CPU. So there's some ideas. Um, I've pretty much already done all of these on this computer. So uh, at least in my case, these did not fix the issue. In your case, it might be totally different. One of those might've fixed the issue. So the next things I'm going to move on to is probably, I haven't touched the CMOS battery yet, which is that little coin-like uh, silver thing on the motherboard. You can pop that out. So to drain the power from the motherboard, uh, you pop out that battery and you just like let it sit for like 15 minutes and then you can pop the battery back in. Um, all the time settings on the motherboard settings are not gonna be good because the battery was taken out. Uh, but uh, that can maybe cause an issue. Um, you could also replace that battery to see if Maybe the battery is drained and that was causing the issue. Uh, you can also reseat the CPU. So basically remove it and put it back in. I'll probably do those on video to see if they'll actually fix the issue, but uh, let's get to it. So in order to pop off the CMOS battery, which is uh, what I'm gonna try next, is uh, you basically find the battery, of course, and I use a little plastic sputter. Use something that's hopefully non-conductive so you won't uh, destroy the battery or your motherboard or something like that. Um, and of course, remember, plug or un unplug your computer and uh, make sure you cycle the power out by holding the power button. Uh, there's usually a little clip. As you can see, there's a little clip right here that uh, you can just pull to the side and then fit your spudger into that little area. And, uh, <laughs> and there's the battery then. So uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. So I'll just let that sit for, you know, 15 minutes. And uh, spoiler alert, I actually already tried this and it didn't work. So I'll go ahead and put it back into the battery like this side and then push it in. 
Beyond that, kind of what I did next is I went into BIOS and I changed some settings. So we'll see what that does. So I just started the computer. Um, as you can see, uh, F10 is set up. So on the keyboard down here, I'm gonna be smashing the F10 button until we see in the bottom left corner that it's entering setup and then we can stop. So that takes us into the uh, BIOS settings. Uh, it's probably gonna be different on most motherboards. Uh, some, I think it's F2. Um, some it's like delete key. It kind of depends on how you get it, but but usually it'll uh, uh, on the motherboard screen they'll tell you what button to press. So now we're into the motherboard BIOS. So that's all the settings in the motherboard. If you already took out the battery, as you can probably see, the time is totally not correct at all. Uh, but that's really not a big deal. Um, you can change that later on once the computer is hopefully fixed. So uh, basically at this point we can go. Um, I usually just uh, change the settings back to default. So if we go all the way to uh, exit, you can go down to load setup defaults and then do that and exit and save the changes. That's an option. Um, you can also go through the settings and kind of tinker around and see if you can figure it out. But uh, typically speaking, loading default settings is the best option uh, because that's what the computer shipped with and the computer shipped working. So. <laughs> You know should work um, but uh, that's not always the case and spoiler alert again I already tried that and the computer just shut off so I knew that wasn't gonna be the solution but I know that can be the solution in certain cases so hopefully that helps you guys out so now in my case I got to keep figuring out what the heck's wrong with this thing here's the next thing I'm doing in an attempt to fix this computer I took the CPU cooler off of the uh, CPU of course uh, which is, I mean, it varies in difficulty. AMD ones just use a clip mount, so they're fairly easy to, to take off. You just open up that clip. Um, uh, it's in the closed position basically right now, and then you just flip it, and then you get the clip off. Uh, Intel ones are either push pin or sometimes screw in, so it just kind of varies, but uh, yeah. So if you, if you don't know how to take those off, I mean, <laughs> you know, you may, maybe you don't want to go this far into uh, trying to fix it, but, um, so one thing I would suggest doing is uh, reseating the CPU, which basically means take it off. So on AMD CPUs, there's this little lever here, which hopefully yeah, you can pull up and then you can take off the CPU. I mean, ideally, I guess you would take off the thermal paste, but uh, there's the CPU on AMD processors, there's pins on Intel processors. The pins are on the motherboard, uh, but don't. Uh, bend these pins because that's something you'll have to fix if you do bend them so and then basically just put the CPU back on the uh, back inside the socket and uh, be very gentle because once again those pins are very delicate don't put any pressure on it that you don't need to so just like wiggle it back and forth and I know it's in place just put the arm back down and I'll put the CPU cooler on it and uh, we'll see if that fixes it uh, most likely it won't because I feel like I've, <laughs> I've never had this actually fix something But it's always a chance that you know, maybe the CPU uh, the, the connection between the CPU and the motherboard is causing an issue It's always a possibility and I'm not really surprised, but that didn't seem to fix our issue uh, Never has but it's always an option at this point our options to fix the computer are kind of dwindling uh, We've already shown that's not the RAM not the hard drive not any accessories plugged into the computer like expansion cards or USB devices or uh, anything like that really. Uh, I, I, you know, I've started the computer with only the vital components. Uh, tested the power supply, that's not the problem. Um, so at this point, it, you know, you kind of have it centered down to either the CPU or the motherboard. Something going on with those two things is probably causing this if the issue is still persisting. One thing I didn't mention earlier which might be helpful is uh, this little black circle right here, which is very dark because it's in a computer. That's the built-in speaker on this motherboard. Some motherboards have a speaker that you can like plug into like some of the ports around here. Um, and, and, and this motherboard is inverted normally. Normally motherboards are flipped this other way. So the connector will usually be on like the bottom side. But um, so like if you plug in a speaker, you might get like an error code uh, and that might be helpful. Uh, for instance, if I take out the RAM, it, it like, or like, you know, take out the RAM altogether, um, the computer will beep at me because there's no RAM in there. So, 
Uh, that kind of stuff can be helpful, but in this case, there is no beeping to help us. So, like I said, there's a, a couple things I can try. Kind of my idea right now is just to uh, maybe upgrade the BIOS. Maybe there's an issue with the BIOS on the motherboard, which was so settings earlier. Um, you know, the BIOS is kind of like the backbone of the motherboard, all the settings and everything. So maybe updating that will help. Um, I'll need to download that from a separate computer and then go into the BIOS and install it. Um, so that's an option, I guess, but, uh, you know, at this point, yeah, you know, probably a motherboard and probably a CPU and in those, both those cases, um, it's usually a little bit expensive to fix because motherboards are very expensive. CPUs are very expensive. And for instance, if it's an older computer, some of the other components won't be compatible, such as the RAM, if you buy a new motherboard and new CPU. So that's kind of where you get into some difficulties. But it looks like this might not be a simple fix, unfortunately, at least in my case. Well, uh, I went ahead and looked for a BIOS update. There is one, but with HP computers, I don't think there's any option to do it um, through the actual BIOS, which is really stupid. You need to do it through the OS. Doesn't really make a lot of sense, but um, so yeah, I can't do that. Even though the BIOS really wasn't that much updated, there was just barely an update. Uh, and then I tinkered around with some BIOS settings didn't fix it. As you can see, the computer is totally off and I didn't turn it off. I don't know, at this point, might be the motherboard, might be the CPU, but it's definitely something that's uh, probably pretty costly and annoying to fix. <laughs> hey y'all, it's a new day and we're at the same computer, kind of, kind of not really. Uh, so let's take a look at what I did to this computer to fix it. I built a new computer basically. <laughs> so obviously it's the same case and everything. Um, and uh, as you can see right now, I'm putting Windows updates on it, which is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so the motherboard is right here and uh, there's a CPU. But uh, yeah, it, it's got to be the motherboard, possibly the CPU, but tested like the RAM and everything on this computer. So it's got to be one of these two parts. And I can't really find any uh, AM4 motherboards that are, you know, like not crap. So, you know, not used, which I really, I, I really don't like to get used motherboards. Um, and, uh, you know, all, all of the used motherboards are pretty much expensive anyway. So uh, I, I think at, at this point it was just worth getting uh, a brand new system. As you can see, I got an AMD uh, A8-7600. A uh, it's an APU with, uh, that's also a quad core. So I'll have good graphics and then good CPU as well. And I'm getting a call. <laughs> Good old Miranda. All right, so uh, yeah, I got a new motherboard, got a new CPU. I uh, had to get new RAM as well because it has GDR3, which kind of blows, but whatever. Um, but was able to use all the other parts. So essentially a new computer, basically. So as you can see, it's looking pretty good. It's a little bit kind of small in there, really. Uh, it's smaller than the other motherboard. Um, still micro ATX, but just smaller. Uh, with a solid state hybrid drive, four gigs of RAM, kind of skimped on there, but he didn't really feel like spending a lot of money. And there's another slot there, so it's always upgradable in the future, which is cool. Um, power supply is still 250 watt or something. Really crappy, but it'll work. Um, and then, like, there's certain things I couldn't use, like this Firewire port. Like, <laughs> what's up with this crap? Um, so, uh, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, I might, I feel like adding a back case fan, uh, it just seems very inadequate. I think the CPU is only 65 TDP, 65 watts TDP, but still it seems kind of inadequate. Um, but anyways, uh, that's how I fixed it. If you went through all the steps to fix your computer and it's still not booting, um, basically it's your motherboard or CPU. So thank you guys for watching this video and I hope you thought it was cool. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And uh, this is probably going to be a long video. Uh, just I haven't started editing it at all, but I feel like it's going to be really freaking long. Uh, just like all these Windows updates. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video, and uh, this HP is running a lot better now, which is pretty cool. Peace out, y'all.